Good evening, everyone, and welcome back to the Suburban Proletarian. Tonight, I want to do something a little bit off topic. No watches, no knives. Tonight, I want to take a look at another gadget. Uh, I'll give you a little bit of backstory first. Um, I know I have not yet revealed what my new car is. It is, in fact, here. Uh, and I haven't done any car-related videos since I did the farewell to the uh, uh, BMW about two months ago. Um, but I do have the new car here. Um, I will be doing the reveal on that soon. Uh, I've been having some problems with it, though. Uh, the, the temperature gauge has been acting a little wonky. And I did consult with a, uh, an expert right here on the tube. Um, and he advised me, after listening to my symptoms, um, that what I was experiencing uh, is symptomatic of a partially blocked radiator. And he advised that I could get one of those little laser-guided infrared thermometers off of Amazon for about 20 bucks. And the best thing to do is to get the, bring the engine up to temperature, scan across the face of the radiator, looking for inconsistencies in temperature if you've got you know large cold spots on the radiator then obviously the radiator is not working as efficiently as it should um and he advised that i could find one of these infrared thermometers on amazon for about 20 bucks now that is true there are actually a number of infrared thermometers on amazon uh, for just about 20 bucks uh, some of them are even a little bit less than that um some of them are very well reviewed, but I am uh, a creature of habit. I do tend to read a lot of reviews, and every single one of those uh, no-name, cheapo infrared thermometers on Amazon uh, had, I would say, uh, a higher number than acceptable uh, of reviews where people complained about inconsistencies in uh, uh, accuracy of temperature readings. And um, I understand that with any electronic device, there is a certain amount of user error. Um, these inf infrared thermometers require that you use them in a very specific manner to get accurate readings. I'm going to go over that a little bit later. Um, but I was seeing reports of temperature inaccuracies of anywhere from 15 to 25 degrees. And for my purposes, uh, looking at the temperature range on the radiator of my car, um, the difference between 80 and 100 degrees is all the difference in the world, Celsius. And... So, you know, if the, if the thing wasn't accurate to more than uh, 25 degrees, plus or minus, that is not going to suit my purposes. So I started looking around at somewhat better thermometers. Uh, I wanted to know what do the professionals use, guys that work on you know, boilers or professional automotive technicians, what are they using? And as it turns out, yeah, Fluke is a big company when it comes to electronic uh, testing devices and instrumentation, but they're also quite expensive. And um, fluke thermometers seem to be the thermometers of choice among professionals, but the very cheapest one I think was pushing about a hundred bucks. And to get one with, you know, more features and somewhat better reviewed, you're pushing the price up into the several hundreds of dollars. At that point, you know, I don't want to spend as much on a thermometer as I might spend on the, the actual radiator for the car. I could just go buy a new radiator and drop it in, and more likely than not, that will solve my problem. But uh, So I wanted to look for something that was maybe a little bit more reputable than these no-name Amazon thermometers, but not expensive, not $100 or whatever. So I looked around, and one thing I did come up with was this this is the klein ir1 i'm assuming that's infrared one but i've had fairly good experiences with klein tools in the past i've owned a number of klein things and i did read the reviews uh, for this thermometer which i did get from amazon and there are reports of inconsist uh, temperature inconsistencies with the klein ir1 uh, but most people were complaining that the thing was five degrees off. 
five degrees I can live with 25 degrees eh, not so much so I decided why not try this one out um, now this cost me $29 or $30 with shipping and everything so you're talking about a $10 price differential between this and the cheap no-name models on Amazon but um, which doesn't seem like much it is a a 50% price increase it's not insignificant but ten dollars I can live with so um, and and I can tell you just from looking at it in its packaging it looks to be pretty well constructed it looks like what I would expect from Klein um, the battery compartment um, is very nicely hinged it looks pretty heavy duty it's secured with a screw here um, the overall construction looks better than what I would expect from a, uh, a no-name Chinese brand off of Amazon. So just a couple of details. Um, the temperature range on this goes from negative 4 degrees uh, to positive 752 degrees Fahrenheit or negative 20 Celsius to 400 degrees Celsius. That's going to be plenty for my purposes. Um, there's a little graphic on the back here that explains something and I think this may be uh, the source of some people's confusion when they're using these things. Um, this has a 10 to 1 distance to spot ratio and what that means is if you look right here if you're 10 inches for instance away from the target that you're uh, taking a temperature of it's going to take a temperature with a one uh, inch circle so it's going to scan a one inch uh, diameter uh, section of that surface that you're trying to uh, take a temperature of I think it's also important to remember that the that uh, according to this graphic at least the center of the laser aiming device should be in the center of uh, that one inch temperature reading circle so I guess they're kind of uh, regulated on an angle to meet, hopefully. So uh, yeah, it's got a targeting laser. I've already given you the temperature range. Um, it has a backlit screen, uh, automatic power off, which is a nice thing because a lot of times I leave things turned on when I'm done uh, using them. And it does have a data hold feature, which I have not yet uh, deciphered how that works. Um, obviously it's made in China it did come with one of those ubiquitous little Klein tool pouches it did come with a 9 volt battery and it looks like we've got an instruction booklet inside here now normally this is the point in the review where I would move over to the tabletop and take a closer look at this thing but as those of you who have been paying attention to the channel already know I haven't been in the studio in months well, I haven't been in the studio to film in months. I've been up here plenty. And my tabletop is an absolute disaster area. I've got to do some major tidying up in the uh, studio here. Uh, got a little bit of uh, unnecessary dust on the bookshelves. Um, I have a lot of stuff coming up soon. i got to get this place organized and ready for shooting again. So anyway, we're going to skip the tabletop. I'm going to cut away now. I'm going to open this thing up, I'm going to put the batteries in it, I'm going to familiarize myself with its use a little bit, and then we're going to, I'm going to come back and we're going to do some, uh, we're going to take some temperature readings. I just fired up my coal boiler about a week ago, so I've got a giant tank of hot water downstairs uh, with a pretty accurate uh, thermostat on it, so we should be able to get an idea of uh, how accurate this thing is. So let me get it set up and I'll be right back. All right, so this will be the first test of the Klein IR1. You can see that the temperature gauge on top of my boiler is showing just about 150 degrees Fahrenheit. In order to activate the Klein IR1, you pull this trigger. Uh, unfortunately, the lighting down here is not great and my camera is having a hard time. You would simply pull this trigger, hold it for two seconds, that activates a laser. We aim the laser at the base of the outlet there.
and we do get a temperature of uh, yeah, around 150 degrees Fahrenheit right at the base of the copper pipe 147 as you can see that matches the temperature on the temperature gauge fairly closely the IR1 does have a short-term memory so it does store the last temperature if you don't pull the trigger for two seconds if you just give it a momentary press it will bring up the last temperature that was read uh, so it'll store one temperature in memory uh, for you know brief recall try it one more time to see if we get a repeat of the last reading and yeah, 140, 147, 148 degrees, something like that. And that's right in line with what our temperature gauge is telling us. So, so there's your confirmation that uh, this thing is in fact um, not 25 degrees off. It seems like it's actually within a few degrees. It would be hard for me to say if it was exactly where it needs to be, but I can tell you I have already run around the house. I'm not going to bore you with that, taking uh, measurements, temperature readings of all different sorts of things, but um, I've already been all around the house and confirmed that the Klein Tools IR1 is, uh, is a pretty good unit. It seems fairly accurate. It seems pretty well built. I apologize for this horrible, harsh lighting. I just have uh, my halogen work light set up down here in the basement. But uh, I think that's all I'm going to bore you with uh, for this video. And uh, let's go wrap this up. So the Klein Tools IR1 looks like a pretty handy little infrared thermometer. It's very difficult for me to know if it's reading to the exact degree, but it seems close enough that it should serve uh, my purpose is I should be able to get an accurate enough reading to at least determine whether or not the radiator in my car is partially blocked or if I've got cold spots on it. Um, I haven't done the reveal on that car yet, but if anyone's interested, I can certainly shoot a video when I'm actually testing the radiator to see if I've got a partially blocked radiator. Um, so if you go ahead and comment down below that you'd like to see that, I will certainly try to work it into my upcoming video schedule. I hope to start generating a lot more content. Things have been very, very busy around here. And uh, for those of you who have been paying attention, you know that I uh, things have been kind of slow here on the channel. But I've got a lot I want to talk about. We're coming into the winter season. Uh, I usually have more time indoors, so hopefully um, I'll be able to shoot a bunch of new videos in the upcoming weeks and months. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. And thank you to all of you who, uh, we just recently passed a thousand subscribers. Um, you're liable to start seeing some advertisements here on the channel. For that, I apologize, but I'm gonna stop doing so much e-bagging now that we're a legitimate channel on YouTube. And that's all possible, thanks to you. Um, so far in like two days, I think I've made about a dollar in ad revenue. So I'm not going to get rich doing this, but hopefully it'll help defray the cost of uh, future videos. So anyway, when I do post those uh, future videos, I hope to see each of you here then. Later, guys.